We're doing good. Yes, I've, I've. Could that be? Could that be the cold open? Actually, could I do that? Well, I just started recording. I made, right, so I I made an right. executive fly, decision. Eagles fly on the road to victory. Fly, Eagles, fly. Score a touchdown. One, two, <laughs> one, two, three. Hit them low. Hit them high. And watch our Eagles fly. Da, 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 fly, <laughs> Eagles, fly. On the road to victory. E A G L E S, Eagles. Thank you. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, tasteful way to introduce <laughs> our episode today. Yeah, is, hello course, and welcome uh, to, well, there's your Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, is notable for beating the Minnesota Vikings. Um, and, and, and now a team without a defense, but it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. We, you know, <laughs> we don't right. need safeties, and <laughs> we're going. Welcome to, well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters. And it has slides, which so you, that has the visual aspect, so you can see things visually with your eyes. Um, mm. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. Uh, Zencast is still recording me at like half volume, which is great. Thank God. But audition is fine, so uh, we bur- we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Oh, maybe I shouldn't use that metaphor. <laughs> oh, you, you think that's the most tasteless thing? You didn't see the drop, I just downloaded it. Uh, I'm Alice Caldwell-Kelly, my pronouns are she and her. I'm also on a podcast called Trash Future. It's very good, you should listen to that. I will ambush you with the tasteless drop at a time of my choosing. All right. Proud of you. Uh, I am Liam Anderson. I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. My pronouns are he, him, and I, yeah, that's it. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, okay. So what you're seeing on the screen in front of you is oh a, a bridge. Well, hmm. actually, uh, two bridges. Um, because uh, there's one bridge what, way in the back what's, there. What's happened to that one in the foreground? It's like oh, a bridge down. and a half. Is it a pontoon yeah. bridge? Uh, No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is not. Um, oh. uh, today we're going to talk about the Interstate 35 West bridge collapse back in 2007. Oh, I did want to mention though, two days ago, uh, we got an email on the on the on our Patreon email or well, they just brought me email from some guy specifically requesting this. So this one's for you. Sorry about your dumb football team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um uh, uh, you know for some reason i saw this picture and my gaze was immediately drawn to this single solitary folding chair down here <laughs> <laughs> oh that's sad <laughs> never a bad time to pop a squat i know <laughs> all right but before we talk about the bridge we're gonna do the goddamn news <laughs> not great. Yeah, uh, not not very good. Um, unfortunately, um, all of the Miami Marlins have coronavirus now. Yeah, <laughs> ba- baseball. We were going to announce to you that baseball has died. Um, yes. I, and the Phillies still managed to drop two of three to a team that's basically a literal leper colony. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I am convinced at this point that coronavirus, in its asymptomatic form, confers on you superhuman baseball prowess. Oh, explain the Red Sox performance last night. Yeah. That was and fucking horrible. That was a disgrace. <laughs> at the top of the board, it's just like, I don't even fucking watch this team. Against the fucking Mets. The oh Met, my god. Meet the Mets. <laughs> meet the, the Mets. Mets. Step right not. up and greet the Mets. Yeah, no. They it's, did. They did. They laid down for them like a dog. I know, mm. right? Fucking socks. So, my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Like you get you, you get really good at baseball when you get COVID and then you die. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why that's why we have to expand the bubble uh until eventually like every professional athlete in every sport in America is within the bubble and has coronavirus. Well did you, I think about it this way. If you make the bubble big enough, everyone will be in it and no one will get coronavirus. Yeah, Steve, that works. Stephen King's the dome as applied to like virology. Dude, it'd be great to be in the fucking dome right now. You you, oh. you could like 
you would have no worries about coronavirus. Yeah. Ah, the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in additional news, Elon Musk says he's going to coo whoever the hell he wants. Yeah, um, and, and like yeah. sarcasm. It's that fucking yeah, right wing it was sarcasm. An epic, he was doing epic troll face when he yeah, said that, so God. it's fine. Dude, I can't imagine having that much fucking money and still like. But, like, I've said this to someone in passing. Like, if I had the kind of money that Elon Musk had, I would, would fuck never off. see would, me again. I, I, you never would. You never would. I would fuck off to an island, not Jeffrey Epstein's kind of island. <laughs> I would fuck off. This is a good I, kind I, of island. I would fuck off to an island with no firearms restrictions, and I would ride ATVs, and I would get CTE at 31 years old, and I would be perfectly happy, and I would die at 40, and I would leave all my money to my cats or whatever. And yes. I, just, I wouldn't be on fucking Twitter.com. I can no. tell you that. You wouldn't be on Twitter posting like it was Reddit and doing a bit of like uh, trolling where you where you say something like uh, pronouns they're bad and then your fucking girlfriend who you just had a kid with has to like call you out on Twitter. Oh my god, that was so Even embarrassing. Maybe I know this isn't you. Like, dude, like I, I'm not very sympathetic to Grimes considering she named her kid after the A12, which she said was like whatever good in battle but like very stealthy even the fact that it was not a fucking fighter craft and it was a prototype to boot but like can you imagine having to fucking log on and be like all right sweetie like that's it time to yank the plug yeah. and also your we gotta do a damage part-time, control it's a part-time <laughs> emerald mind air just this is awesome. yeah. We, 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 it, we've got to like form a union for like Grimes and Kim Kardashian <laughs> for like uh, having to rein in their two successful boyfriends uh, who have just like just have got brain rot from being too wealthy. Good I'm Lord. like I'm, I'm I'm more sympathetic to Kanye because like I know it's a manic episode when I sees it, mm-hmm. but like even so, man, just log off, please. Just log. You live in Wyoming. Just call it. Yeah, just just log off for a while. But this is the thing: none of us will ever log off. Twitter is a curse. It's actually even worse for you if you have money, because I, I don't know, you you just like don't have the aura of invincibility anymore. Because like uh, leftist thought sixty nine four twenty can reply to you and be like, "Yes, yeah, suck my dick," actually, <laughs> which is good, but it will drive you insane. But it, wait, did, it, uh, Kanye West lives in Wyoming. He has a ranch in Cody, Wyoming. Yes. Damn. Yeah, I wonder if he like he just hangs out and is bored with Warren Buffett all day. Mm. So Warren Buffett's Montana, right? Yeah. Wasn't Ted uh, Ted Turner, Wyoming? Mm. Yeah, but well, Ted Turner's all of it. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't imagine living in those places. Like, it just seems like it's too far away from anything. You know, you have a ranch and it's a million square miles, and you have one dollar for every one of your million square miles. We have a thousand dollars for every one of your million square miles. Well, it's it, it's it's <laughs> like the joke about the American rancher talking to the British farmer, and the American rancher's like, "Yeah, I've got so much land that I, I get up in the morning, I get in my truck, I drive, it breaks down, I drive, it breaks down, it runs out of gas, I drive, I break down, I run out of gas. I do that over like three days, and I'm still not at my property line." And the British guy's like, "Yeah, I had a truck like that once." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess I guess Elon Musk saying he can coo anyone to get lithium is good for his stonks, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's that's that's. I, I think that's what this is, you know. Well, if, if, gonna... if he gets enough, if he if he like has, if Tesla has positive, uh, like a positive share price for I think four straight quarters, it gets into the uh, the index funds and the Standard and Poor's, uh, and so he makes a bunch of money off of that. So yeah, cool. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh my god, can you imagine if Elon Musk orchestrated an actual coup? Like, if he were the guy planning it, right? This is the strongest (laughs) argument against, like, the Elon Musk did a lithium coup thing, is like, imagine if Elon Musk planned that shit. The the, 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 the rival's plastic just melts. (laughs) <laughs> they, have the, they have the boring <laughs> company boring flamethrower. Throw. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of people with the boring company flamethrower that's just a blowtorch, and like they roll up in Teslas, and the door falls off, and the steering <laughs> wheel comes off. <laughs> just an armored Cybertruck. Mm-hmm. Happens to me two yeah. or three times a month. Buddy, get a new car. I'm begging you. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. All right. So that was the goddamn news. Okay, 
Hey, it's so, EastEnders. Yes. Da-dum, 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 da-dum. <laughs> so, uh, now, to, who was that? Uh, it, it, did, did you have like oh. an owl sissy ringtone? <laughs> no, it's the listen now. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, so in order to learn about the I-35 West bridge collapse, we had to first ask, what is I-35 West? First. Mm. Yes. Um, it's an interstate highway that goes through Minneapolis, right? Right around, I think it goes down here. You know, this is your regular old urban freeway, right? Ripped through a bunch of neighborhoods in the early 1960s. You know, it takes thousands of acres of taxable land off the city's books. It displaces a couple thousand people, dumps thousands of cars onto clogged, streets, clogged city streets every day. It pollutes a whole bunch. It looks ugly. It doesn't work very well at moving people, so on and so forth, right? You know, look, look at how big, look, look at how much... Land is used for interchanges, right? Mm. You know, it's like right next to downtown Minneapolis. This is this is oh what you get for downloading it, your interchanges off of the workshop instead of just of making your designated own. Designated the yeah. Red Bull Highway after the <laughs> Red Bull Division from World War II, which is at least kind of interesting. Oh, I thought and it was it the energy follow, drink. It doesn't follow interstate uh, naming conventions, which pisses me off because it was like grandfathered in, which I hate. Oh yeah, because I thirty five West goes through the Minneapolis, and I thirty five East goes through St. Paul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Twin cities, twin freeways, and yes. it's just like yeah, beautiful. It's this like wide trench of concrete that makes your city much worse. So part of building this freeway involved bridging the mighty Mississippi River, although. They're way up in Minneapolis, so the Mississippi River is a lot less mighty right here, right? You know, mm. this is the upper end of where it's navigable, right? Uh, right after like this lock here, there's basically I think it goes up a couple miles and then it it stops. With my uh, with my brain genius uh, knowledge of American geography, I didn't know the Mississippi went that far north. Like I don't know where the hell I thought it started, but I didn't think it got up as far as Minnesota. Oh, it, it, yeah, it, it just keeps going. Keeps going all the way up. Uh, it starts in uh, uh, it starts in Hudson Bay. Actually, no, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> um, like like Itasca, Itisca, yeah, whatever. Someone's getting mad at me at the comments for it. Huh? Is it? it keeps going up. Isn't isn't the Standing Rock Reservation right on the banks of the Mississippi, or is that the Missouri? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't know neither. <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> welcome good. to the podcast where we we know about things. Yeah. But, you know, this is, again, this is the top end of where it's navigable right here at St. Anthony Falls. Uh, day St. Tony, I'm doing miracles over here. You know? and, <laughs> yeah, uh, name name uh, for the guy who helps you find your keys. Forget about it. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, so they had to build this bridge. So when they built the freeway, they did. They built this bridge. It's called the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge. It never had a special name. <laughs> That's Man, just what they it- called it. They didn't even like name it after well, uh, like some local hero. That's sad. No, they have no heroes up there. I believe it is the Missouri River, by the way. No, certainly not with that football team. <laughs> you can just, just fucking name it after Prince, Jesus. I, I don't, I don't think they could name it after Prince because it was 1967 when this opened. Oh well, yeah, that's yeah. your problem. You, yeah, I also exactly. like it. Probably like uh, costs a lot of money to to change the signs <laughs> to that symbol. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had to get. Yeah, they had to get permission. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's start by getting an idea of how this bridge works, right? Let's go to the NTSB report. Well, okay. it, it, it holds up a thing, and then like people drive over the top of it. Is my understanding? I've played Poly Bridge. Yes. <laughs> yes. So this uh, this particular bridge. Combination of two types of structures, right? So from about here to about here, right? And here to here, it's what's called a deck girder bridge, right? Which is just, there's some big steel beams, you put some concrete on top, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. And in the middle... <laughs> in the Thank middle, you, St. Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle, <laughs> the problem it's with this a, bridge is that it was too Italian American. <laughs> is that what we're going with this? It's just too Italian in a Norwegian society. Yeah. 
And the middle is a deck truss, right? Which means there's, you know, there's a deck where the cars drive, and underneath there's a truss, right? Okay. Because mm-hmm. it says on the tin, that's you make, you make a bunch of triangles. Triangles are strong. Yeah. This particular type is a Warren truss because the triangles alternate like this, right? Oh, it's not because it's shaped like a snake? No. no. <laughs> Big structural oh, okay. bridge, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. And what we're going to focus on is the deck truss portion, right? Because this is where the stuff happens, right? So how, how, does this, uh, how does this work? How does this put together? Well, to uh, learn about that, we're going to do some beam theory. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. This is worse than organic chemistry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. no. This is graphs, easy. All... There's lines. There's letters. Yes. There's more than one letter? If your it's math like uses a letter above, like, I don't know, D, I have instantly <laughs> lost interest. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a, a little bit about what we call Euler-Bernoulli beam theory, right? Oh, this boy. is one of the, the, the basic things they teach you in statics, right? So start out with, uh, let's sort of define what we have here. We have, we have a beam up here, right? And we see the two types of connections to the ground. This is a fixed connection, which is like a hinge. Or excuse me, this is a this is a pin connection, which is like a hinge. This is called a roller here. Uh, and then over here we have a fixed connection, right? So your pin, you know, lets this beam rotate any way it wants. Your fixed connection provides a reaction that only goes up. You know, this is up and sideways, right? And then your fixed doesn't let it move in any direction, and it also resists rotation, right? Mm, that's the one I would use if I had to pick between these three. I would simply m- choose the one that does not make the bridge move. Ooh, bad choice. Um, Damn. <laughs> fuck. As we'll get wow. into. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, all right, so when you have like a beam, right, in this case, okay, so let's look at this beam, right? We have P here. P is the load. Right? The mm-hmm. load going on the beam, right? P, P is yes. stored in the beam. Yeah. P is stored yep. in the beam, yes. And from that we can figure out, okay, there's some reactions, because the some of the reaction the some of the forces is equal to zero, or else something's moving. And if something's moving on a bridge, you have a problem. And from that, you can start to calculate more uh information, right? So number one, this is M here. M is the moment, right? A moment is sort of like torque. It's a twisting force, right? Hmm. So you get bridges it, twisting. Okay. You don't want your bridge twisting. That's why you use the fixed connection point at every opportunity. No, don't do that. Actually, <laughs> oh boy. No, I'm doubling down on it. I'm refusing to learn anything. Just make the fixed connection stronger. So, so if you have if we have a, a P in the middle here, and we know that this is a pin, it allows rotation, this is a roller, it also allows rotation, then we know the moment is zero at each end, right? So the highest point of moment is in the middle of the beam here, right? Right. So that's, uh, that's sort of like the, the uh, uh, again, it's measured in like foot pounds or pound inches, or something like that, very similar to torque, except that nothing's moving. Uh, below that we have Q. We're not going to talk about that. That's just shear force, which well, we go know, one, we go all. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and then underneath that we have W. W is your deflection, right? Which is the integral of the moment, right? And I that's based. Barely on... know what any of these things are. That's um, it's a visual <laughs> representation of what the beam looks like and how far it will deflect. Right, given oh, okay. any amount of load, sure. right? So that's based on your Young's modulus, which we talked about in episode one, uh, briefly, if I recall correctly, uh, which is sort of just a measure of strength of materials generally, and something called the moment of inertia, which is this that wonderful, wonderful measurement, which is measured in like inches to the fourth. <laughs> Ow! Oh, God. <laughs> my brain hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a very, very difficult to calculate, which is why the way 
the way you do it in real life is not you calculate it. It's you look it up in a chart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you simply use a computer to mm -hmm. do all of this nerd stuff. And you just go ahead and build the bridge like the Chad that you are. Of course, yes. That's what we do today. So mm -hmm. you can see here, this, the, the moment here goes down to a point. We have, I don't know, let's say this, this beam is 10 feet long and there's a thousand pounds on the beam, right? Um, oh, I got to do math here. <laughs> oh, God, Shit. It's, even get, it's even getting to you. <laughs> You're the one yeah, who knows this stuff. I know, right? You have I, I, gotta do this. It, man. I gotta do this in my head. I should have written this down. The reactions <laughs> would be 500, 500 pounds upward at both ends, and then the moment at the middle would be 500 pounds times 5 feet. So that would be 2,500 foot pounds right here. Going, and that increases linearly all the way up. Here's the fun thing. The uh, convention when you're drawing these diagrams is that a, 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 a positive moment is below the neutral, like, zero line here. What? Yeah. I, I hate that. I know, right? Um, <laughs> so a positive moment causes something to sag like this. A negative moment makes it bow up. That's called hogging. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Lo lo love for my beam to be hogging because there's not enough P. Yes. <laughs> So, all right, but you can see, like, you have the slope going, well, I guess that uh, goes down, and this is the integral, so you see the slope goes from negative to positive, you know, it's like, it, it, it's a little bit annoying how these dr diagrams are drawn. Um, and then that was perfectly clear to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easy stuff, easy. This is, yeah. this is great. Yeah, Do you have I, anything more advanced <laughs> for us? Yeah, exactly. Oh, All right. Oh, oh, a little, little bit of easy, easy breezy <laughs> stuff. And not, you know, I feel like everybody at Drexel failed statics like seven times, and you still I, don't know what you're doing. I was really good at statics. Statics was the only thing I was good at. <laughs> no, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry for insulting you this way. So because a lot of it, if you could figure out what it was supposed to look like visually, you could work backwards and do the calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Instead like, yeah. of trying to, like, derive this from first principles and, like, invent a bridge with numbers. Yeah, yeah, you do back. You got, I, I was like, yeah, that looks about right. That doesn't look about right. What was log with logs across rivers? Yep. Or rope or ropes across rivers? <laughs> what you was wrong with not back. crossing rivers? Yeah, just it's don't fine. do it. You don't need to do that. <laughs> so, all right, and then uh, over here we have a fixed connection, which means that the beam stays at that same uh, angle the whole way, which means our... our if we have a load, this is a distributed load here, which is a little different. You know, the moment is highest at the connection as opposed to here where it's in the middle, you know, and our deflection looks a little different. Um, yeah, know, it's I, nice and secure. <laughs> I, I mean, that's sagging a whole lot down at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, you just put another fixed Excuse connection me. on the other end. Excuse yeah, me, easy, the curve easy. is actually up here, so while this, while this beam is pointed down, it's actually technically hogging, not sagging. Oh. Is, yes. Am I supposed to find this erotic? Yes. If Powerful. you want. <laughs> okay. Well, Alright, so... Now, this is like a simple beam, um, but what we, what we do, a simple <laughs> beam, can you, th I, I, I would love to hear your idea of a simpler example for a beam than one load and two reactions. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's, I this draw a line, and I say, yeah, that's a beam. That, that looks, looks like good. a beam that to me. That looks good. I think we're done here, boys. Yeah, so down here we have a truss, right? And your, your theoretical trust lets you do away with a whole lot of the complexities here, right? Because when we do, when we draw a truss, when we theorize a truss, uh, every connection is a hinge, right? All of what this can rotate freely, exactly <laughs> like polybridge, actually. Uh, that's, that's how the theory works, right? And then this will be like a pin connection here, and over here we have a roller, um, I've added two little circles underneath to indicate roller. Because um, those are like wheels that it rides on. Right. 
So this means we don't have to worry about moments at all in a truss. Every force is applied longitudinally, which means we don't have to worry about moment of inertia so much. You can actually worry exclusively about just how much, like the, the amount of steel you're using in each member rather than the specific cross section, right? Hmm. Engineers, lazy. Yeah. And don't like doing math, much like we don't like doing math. So yeah, you exactly. just minimize that. All the forces are applied at joints rather than, you know, in the middle of a section of uh, material, right? Mm hmm. So now I mentioned that one end is a hinge, one end is a roller. Now, this simplifies our calculations a lot. That's one of the reasons why you do it, right? Um, oh, yeah, it feels simple. Yeah, so it <laughs> makes the truss statically determinate, right? Which means it's easy to calculate everything out on paper. Um, you know what all the forces are. In, uh, yeah, it just makes calculating forces a matter of trigonometry. But also, it's good for expansion and contraction of the bridge, right? You know, for uh, you know, thermal expansion and contraction. So this is a picture of an actual roller. Wait on a second, you're old... telling me that every bridge is just, like, on fucking wheels? And I yeah. didn't know this the whole time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alice, you freaked out when I talked about rocker towers, <laughs> I mean... Yes, yes, bridges, bridges, bridges are my fish. I am terrified now. I don't bridges. think that's unfair. I don't think that's unfair. Why, I, why I can't you just bridges. put, like, a solid thing into the ground and, like, put a thing in between the two solid things? Because What's so that, difficult about because that? Because then when it expands, it would force itself against the solid thing, and over a period of years, uh, maybe decades, it would start to crack and uh, eventually fail. No, make the solid thing stronger. Make the solid thing stronger. Build build you, a bunch of houses and shops on the middle of the span uh, to encourage commerce. Yeah. You know, fuck around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, all right. So you can see this is this is a roller, right? There's two like gears, sort of geared wheels here. You can see also right in the middle. There's a pin sticking through a slot here. That's so it doesn't expand or contract too much. So you don't want the thing to roll right off, you know? Oh, oh um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. There's a, there's a pin. Yeah, yeah, easy, it's easy. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, there's a pin. Mm -hmm. We make fun of helicopters, and yet here we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, now, this particular bridge... Uh, was made out of two kinds of structural members, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, if we remember back to episode one, a lot of early trusses were made of eye bars, right? Which are sort of explicitly built to conform to truss theory, right? Um, yeah, and, and, and not the eye the bug. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, we start to get into sort of different shapes as manufacturing and engineering improves, right? So on the I-35 West Bridge, the main structural members were something that, depending on who you are, you might call an I-beam, you might call an H-beam, you might call a W-section, which stands for- How is the fuck is that a W? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wide flange. Okay. Yeah. This is the flange. This is the flange. That's, this uh, is the web. Is this is it's my an... body. This is my blood. <laughs> <laughs> this, no, this is this is an eye, and it's an eye bar, and it's dis I mean uh, an eye beam, as distinct from an eye bar, which is like a bar with an I, an E Y E I in it. Yes. Um. It, it, this is the, none of this is confusing. No. Nah. Nah, if you were struggling to keep up with this, it is your <laughs> fault, and you should have studied harder. Oh, I, I I apologize to the people who listen to this audio only. Uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> All right. So Sorry, folks. <laughs> now, so some of the some of the members were um W sections like this guy. Um other ones were what we call box members, right? Which is this guy here, right? So a box member is a long hollow beam, right? It's sort of it's in the, the cross section is a box, right? Um and there are some small ones you can get. Those are rolled in a rolling mill, right? You know, you just take a sheet of steel, 
and you put it through several rollers until it's in a box shape and then you sort of weld the top, you know. But if you're mm-hmm. making really big ones, usually instead of doing that, what they'll do is they'll take a couple L sections or maybe a C channel. Those ones actually look like what they sound like they are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll weld them together. And, um, you know, that'll be the finished uh, uh, structural section, right? Mm-hmm. So these these developed from an earlier form of structural member called the lattice girder, right? Which is this guy right here. Oh, the cool see. like trellis supports. Oh yeah, um, because once uh, once welding technology got better, they realized they could just manufacture this all in one piece, as opposed to this relatively labor intensive lattice, right? It Even looks though nicer it, though. It does look nicer. Um, now this the both of these. That we're looking at here on the uh, San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, um, and when the when the when the truss portion collapsed in that earthquake, uh, earthquake, 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 earthquake. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they usually are pretty quick. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's like uh, it's like how quick used to meant uh, mean alive. Yeah, the quick yeah. and the dead. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So when um. When that, when that, when the portion of the Oakland Bay Bridge collapsed in the uh, big earthquake, right, they actually went through and retrofitted the old span. They removed all the lattice girders and just replaced them one for one with uh, box sections. Ah, reject yeah. modernity. Embrace <laughs> tradition. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like, never I, lived there for how I want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do like lattice girders a lot. And also, there's, um, you know, they, they're good. They're kind of ornamental, even like uh, Penn Station yeah. had a lot of those, like the old one. Yeah. But yeah, these, even though they use more material, they're cheaper to produce. Okay. Mm. So it, uh, those are the main structural members. Now, what holds them together? Bunch of rivets. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is it, is it glue? It is not glue. Okay. <laughs> Actually, this is where, this is where we're going to, this is where I'm going to continue to argue against uh, Alice's make everything a fixed connection. No, make <laughs> everything a fixed connection. It's well, I, stronger. I with Alice here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what we're looking at here is called a gusset plate, right? Okay. So at the end of all of these beams, you have to attach them together somehow. And the way you do it is with this gusset plate where you have a big, thick steel plate, and you put... Today you would use bolts, back, but back in the day you used rivets. You put Which, all again, those through more there. more aesthetic. Looks nicer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I'll agree with both of those. And, um, you know, the forces from the beam are transferred through the plate to the other beams, right? Mm-hmm. And you can sort of Man. see how building to the theory uh, is happening here, right? Yeah. Because bring we have... rivets back, though. Like genuinely, bring bring back the thing where you just have a guy with a thing of molten metal, just, yes. just like whips a fucking like I'm... red hot <laughs> rivet at a guy with a gun. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. I, I'm about to get to that. Oh boy. So uh, you can sort of see how building to the theory is at work here because you have. This large box uh, section up here, right? And you notice it's not actually uh, supporting the deck above it, right? That's being supported by another beam up here, right? Mm-hmm. Which isn't connected to the like long transverse beam, right? No, the the, no. the transverse beam. So, hold on, let me make sure I remember all of the goddamn names. You, you you got your your transverse beam. You got your cis first beam. You got your gender fluid beam. <laughs> yes, you gotta watch for those uh, gender fluid beams. You don't know what the loads are on those. Um, <laughs> Pronouns are bad. All right, yes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Elon. <laughs> we have to use proper names for everyone all the time. <laughs> You just All have right. to introduce yourself, and you're like, "My name is Justin Rosniak, and my pronouns are Justin Rosniak." <laughs> yes. So, all right, so you got the deck up here, right? This beam supporting it here is called a stringer, right? Okay. There are several stringers supporting the beam. They are on top of what's called the floor beam. That's the transverse one, right? Okay. The floor beam is at every joint so that the load is only applied at the joints, right? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Since this is a wide bridge, there's also a floor truss, which you can see up here, you know, add, adding to the, uh, you know, general sort of, it's it just uh, complexity, I guess. Um, <laughs> just, I, I, I have dem bones playing in my head. The floor truss <laughs> is connected to the floor beam. And yes. The floor beam is connected to the stringer beam. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, so all the loads are actually applied at all the joints, right? So now these are older gusset plates here, and they are riveted, right? And rivets produce a more rigid connection than what we do now, which is we do bolts, right? Yeah. And this is good and bad. Um, because you know, good because it, it well, it's bad because it looks less cool. Yes. But it's good because it gives all these beams a little bit of wiggle room. You know, they can rotate ever so slightly, right? But when you have a rivet that completely fills the hole, um, rather than having only, you know, transverse uh, or longitudinal, um, what's it called, forces, uh, you might get a little bit of a twisting force in there. Um, now, that's not important to what we're talking about today, I guess, but, um, so, now, there's some calculations associated with gusset plates. I'm not going to talk about them, because they're too damn complicated. <laughs> well, uh, they're too, uh, after after uh, yeah. the shit yeah, that right. you put us yeah, through, right. you're like, this is all what right. you throw in the towel. Oh, 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 yeah, ease off the throttle after we've melted your brains into pasta sauce. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> So I, 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 I don't want to do, it's, it's basically like doing finite element analysis, which we usually do on a computer, but on paper, uh, uh, which people have figured out how to do in the twenties. Um, people smarter than I am. Just but with a slide rule. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But there's, there's some established methods of calculating how to size these things. They were established in the 1961 Ashto manual on highway bridge construction. Um, but even in 1961, the actual science on this was still a little bit primitive. Um, and your gusset plate is usually the weak point in any truss structure, right? Uh, cause mm. you know, you got all these rivets, uh, you know, you got, uh, stuff can start to crack here really easily. Um, so now the loads on this bridge, right? You have, so every, every structure has dead loads and live loads, right? Yeah, sure. De- dead load so, is just the stuff that's in the structure, right? It's yeah. there all the time. Yeah. yeah, so your dead load is the the bridge itself, um, which I, I, the bridge, you know, the structure, the deck, the various accoutrement, uh, so, you know, the lights, um, you know, the, 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 gui- the guardrails, you know, all the stuff that's there all the time, and then your live load is trucks and snow, right? All right. Those are the two things you can. I like the cars just don't figure like yeah. next to trucks. Yeah, exactly. No, it's just trucks. Uh, cause trucks, uh, cause general sort of your general rule is it's uh you know the weight of the vehicle to the fourth power. So um you know the the amount of damage that trucks are doing uh is so completely out of proportion to any other vehicle that crosses the bridge you only consider trucks and snow man um, it, it, it seems like trucks are a kind of a shitty way to transport stuff maybe we shouldn't have like invested in transporting everything in the world with them yeah exactly um, mm. build a train build a, build a train yeah so bridge back right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Simply man, do man, not cross water. Man should have never crossed the Euphrates. <laughs> <laughs> we just like one of those utopia images that's just like if society had never discovered the bridge and it's just like a, a perfect like a futuristic society that exists in one tiny wedge between the Tigris and the Euphrates. That's it's very confusing because the usual image you use for that uh that meme actually includes a bridge. Ah oh, fuck! Not, we, not gotta, we gotta have a not no. We gotta have a bridgeless one. <laughs> All right. So now your live load, because you know stuff's moving. Every bridge has cyclical loading, right? So you know one track crosses the bridge. That's one load cycle, right? Obviously, there's many simultaneous load cycles. Um, and all these bridges, though, you know, they don't deflect very much from one truck. 
they're seeing millions and millions of load cycles every year, right? And very subtly bends the bridge out of shape, right? You know, it's the same oh, as boy. like if you take a paper clip and you, uh, you know, bend it back, back and forth a whole bunch of times, right? Should have made all of the connections mm -hmm. much more fixed and much stronger. No. <laughs> that, that would do the opposite of what you think it would do. <laughs> don't, care, don't care, don't care. It's, it's intuitive to me. <laughs> Give me the brittle bridge. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fine. It was, completely, it was completely rigid intact until one day when it just split in half and then exploded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, the entire bridge settles into the bottom of the river perfectly. Every single and then you just joint on it intact. And then you stack it yeah. on top. Yep. There you go. It was, it was so it. it was so what rigid. What we invented here is a dam. It was so rigid that when it finally broke, it sort of like exploded and clipped through reality like a bad Gmod uh, video. <laughs> it makes the like Gmod crashing sound. Much. So yeah, there's uh, there's load cycles got on this bridge constantly. This is why you have to do maintenance, you know. And there's also other things. It's Minnesota, right? So you have a lot of salt and freeze thaw that's affecting the structure, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so this bridge was designed by Sverdrup and Parcel. Um, <laughs> okay. Gasly no, no, Not a real name. Yeah. <laughs> Built from 1964 to 1967, it opened to traffic that year. It performed adequately for 40 years, right? You can just, see a, here, just a workhorse, you know, not, not important yeah. enough that anybody gives it a name or anything. Yeah. But it, it, it performs adequately. Yeah, exactly. You can see here they're finishing up the last center section. You can see here two iron workers just uh, hanging on the side with no sort of safety equipment at all. Oh, um, the 60s. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Both uh, day drinking. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> yeah, light a cigarette oh. off the welder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. It, it calms the nerves. It calms the nerves. <laughs> so... You know, stuff gets old and it breaks. Minnesota Department of Transportation was performing regular inspections, but they weren't making too many repairs, right? Mm. Um, so from 1991 on, it was rated as structurally deficient, right? Um, now, a lot of bridges in the United States get a structurally deficient rating on inspection, right? And that sure doesn't, mean, doesn't mean USA. they're about to collapse. <laughs> Pennsylvania is the worst, I think. Um, huh. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We we listen, man. We will replace the covered bridges when they come and take them from us. <laughs> Those aren't the structurally deficient ones. Yeah. All we need to do is systematically defund every Department of Transportation and Public Works for like thirty to forty years, and then see what happens. Oh, we won't have any bridges anymore, and we can finally achieve utopia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, you know, if a bridge is structurally deficient, that sounds really bad. It's only moderately bad, usually. Uh, it doesn't mean they're about to collapse, usually, but they might require major maintenance. You know, they might put a weight limit on the bridge, something like that. Um, and our whole truss structure on this bridge was something called fracture critical, right? That means... Failure of one member on this bridge would cause the entire truss section to come down. D okay. Donning my Ed Harris waistcoat and being like, yeah. failure is not an option. Okay. Yes. I, I think this was to make it easier to build. I'll explain that in a couple slides. Um, hmm. Here's, here's Presumably the guy. like a Sverdrup and Parcel or whatever were just like, yeah, yeah no, it's fine. They'll, they'll, they'll just maintain it. Like, we, exactly. did, we did tell them that if any of this shit breaks, then the thing will collapse. So, yeah. So, and this is, uh, this is fun. Here's some guys doing in this highly compressed image. Uh, is a guy in a, uh, so this is like, this, this is like a cherry picker, but instead it goes under the bridge. Instead, so that's, that's, that kind of truck is called a snooper. Right. This actually feels less safe to me than the guys just hanging onto the side. <laughs> I would feel more uncomfortable just on just out on the end of they, that arm. Oh yeah. They 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 have some serious outriggers on this thing. I think it's fine unless it isn't. Uh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, like by, by the same token, you could say that about the sixties guys. It's fine unless you let go of the beam. So yeah. don't let go of the beam. In which case, it won't be three, my problem anymore. Three yeah. points of contact. Three points of contact mm -hmm. at all times. Like the okay. one guy who was on the, they did an interview with a bomb defusal tech or whatever demolition tech in uh, in Afghanistan, and they said like, how do you keep calm? You know, with such pressure, and he and he basically said. Uh, well, either I do my job right, or it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The part of me that would worry about that is like being embedded in my friend's neck or something <laughs> at like terminal velocity. <laughs> awesome. So, okay, uh, there were a couple of renovations that happened to this bridge over the years, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, <laughs> just a, an extremely good. Um, E, 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 E,
Yeah. You, yeah. You, you just have a bunch of big concrete mixers positioned on this bridge that you've shaved down. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just, again, and nothing, nothing in construction or inspection of bridges makes me feel at ease at all, you know? Yeah. So, when they did this, they added two extra inches of concrete to the deck in total, right? And that increased the dead load on the bridge by three million pounds, which is about 13%, right? That's fine. Makes it more solid. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So then, in 1986 and 1997, they did some inspections on the deck girder per deck girder portion, right? Um, and they they decided they were going to drill some stress relief holes to stop some of the cracks <laughs> in the <laughs> girders. <laughs> that's the sex scene. That's, okay, that's what the kids yeah. are calling it. <laughs> so when you have like a crack, right, like this in a piece of steel, right? it generally starts getting bigger because there's a big stress concentration right around the end, right? One of the things you can do to stop a crack from getting bigger is oh to boy. drill a big hole at the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. You'll make it weaker. Why would you drill <laughs> holes in this beautiful bridge where everything is fixed together? I, I am going to be the best bridge engineer <laughs> in the world. This is counterintuitive, but it reduces. Well, well, you have less, you have less material, but you reduce the concentration of stress at any particular point, so it's a lot less likely to have a problem, right? Or, or to continue expanding. Now, obviously, if the crack is bad enough, you know it's going to keep going. But yeah, we have we have drilled a hole the size of the bridge. Uh, we had to drill the bridge in order to save it, but the crack won't expand anymore. Yes. So, in 1997, there were some improvements to the roadway, right? They put new barriers on, they put new lighting on, they put in an anti-icing system, because it's Minnesota, and this bridge would just get covered in black ice, like, constantly. Um, and this added another 1.13 million pounds of dead load onto the bridge. It's another 6.1%, right? It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. And over time, you know, cars, trucks, buses become larger and heavier, mostly trucks, of course. Uh, Traffic gets worse, right? So there's more loading cycles happening, and every loading cycle is heavier than it was before, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And, of course, corrosion is happening because, you know, in the wintertime, it's just pure salt everywhere. Um... You know, because it's a it, very it, hostile environment to the bridge, isn't it? Yeah, very hostile environment to anything metal. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, stuff's corroding. Um, in 2007, they do a project to repair a sinkhole under a pier, and then they start repaving the bridge, right? Okay. Because the, uh, you know, that's a nice thing about a concrete deck is it lasts very long. Uh, this is about 30, well, this is exactly 30 years. Um, which is about how long you expect a concrete roadway to last, as opposed to an asphalt roadway, which ten years at best. Um, mm. Just, so, just, just do wood. Uh-huh. Just do wood. Well, there's a wooden, there's a wooden deck bridge over the Delaware, I think, somewhere hmm. way up the way up the river. Uh-huh. It's one of those tiny ones. Um, <laughs> no, I, I want. I'm, I'm talking about this. I want like a giant, uh-huh. like. Uh, freeway bridge is made entirely out of wood. One of those Make exists, actually. Um, really? I can't think oh, of where boy. it is offhand. There's a couple of uh, cross-laminated timber bridges which have gone up in the past two or three decades. Oh, God, uh, really? Y- yeah. I don't like that. Th- they look real good. Uh, <laughs> it looks so Scandinavian and shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got this in a flat pack from Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> so... All right, so they hire a company called Progressive Contractors Incorporated. Hmm. Mm, Dem socks. That, that sounds yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, you get, they get them to repair the Warren Trust, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're from St. Michael, Minnesota. Their job was to remove the two-inch uh, layer of concrete that was put in in 1977. That's the wearing la- layer, right, because it wears down. And they'd repave the bridge with new concrete, they'd patch some miscellaneous details in the curbs, install new expansion joints, 
remove and replace the anti-icing system, right? The project began in June of 2007, and substantial completion was set for September 21st, 2007. Which is one of the problems when you do concrete repaving is you can you can repave an asphalt road in like two days. Concrete repaving is a much more substantial job. Hmm. Well, yeah, and you have to do it in summer, uh, so as not to just have a bunch of fucking snow landing oh on your ship. God. Yeah, exactly. It's going to throw off the water cement ratio. Um. So. All right. So they're still using low slump concrete, right? Now, concrete is a mixture. Concrete is different from cement. Um, <laughs> don't say cement when you mean concrete. <laughs> All right, so... Go off, King. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get them. Get their ass. <laughs> so concrete is made of gravel and sand. That's your aggregate, right? You got cement. You got water. Sometimes you have admixtures, which is, you know, stuff like you, you add something... Add a weird chemical to it to give it some special properties, right? I love I love adding weird chemicals mm -hmm. to stuff to give it some special properties. Oh yeah. oh yeah, you do some alchemy, but with concrete. I turn I turn gold into ten thousand psi concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you could like just randomly just throw <laughs> precious element into into concrete and just be like, yeah, it's got some gold in there, and just oh, sell yeah. it for more. Yeah, some some alchemist is like trying to make the perfect concrete, and he's like, I threw threw a bunch of emeralds in here, and then he, <laughs> he's, he, and then like they do the slump test on it, and just <laughs> <laughs> Elon this Musk chuckles. You mean the apartheid <laughs> emeralds? <laughs> All right, so because this is low slump concrete, that meant meant of course it had to be mixed on site, right? Uh, bunch because, of big concrete mixes on the bridge. Yeah, so. And since the bridge was supposed to be kept open to traffic while they re were repaving, right, they weren't going to close it for a couple months, um, you couldn't, like, stage all the materials on the ground. Um, so they decided, well, we're going to try and keep it on the on-ramps and other parts as much as possible. We're going to have to do a couple stages where we take all the aggregates and stage them on top of the bridge, right? We're getting closer to the, the tasteless drop. <laughs> So, okay. In early afternoon of August 1st, 2007, there was a big concrete pour scheduled that day for 530 feet of bridge between node 14, that's right here, yeah, and node 0 prime over here. You notice that this goes 0 to 14 to 13 with an apostrophe down to 0 with an apostrophe. That's because engineers hate naming conventions that make sense and are easy to understand. <laughs> it also reflects that the bridge is identical on both sides, you know, it's symmetric, but, you know, the, 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 the whole thing where you have to, like, you know, you have... It, it, Why would you do primes instead of, like, negative numbers? Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Well, uh, why wouldn't you have a node, ne like, I, I realize negative zero is, like, insanely annoying to mathematicians, but yeah. it makes a hell of a lot more sense than zero prime. Yeah, it, it doesn't make, it, the, the way this is, I, I feel like I would get confused if I were looking at engineering documents with this naming convention, even if it's like, yeah, you're supposed to, you know, just swap these around. I don't know how the construction documents were set up. Um, or like, so... Now they were they were going to pave this whole section. They had paved a few other sections of the bridge bridge successfully, but they hadn't staged all the construction material on the bridge before, right? They had. And my finger is hovering <laughs> over the button. So <laughs> <laughs> the button that makes people unsubscribe yeah. from us. Well, the, uh, well. <laughs> all the stuff was staged uh, from Pier Six to about Node Ten, right up here. You can see that up here. Right, this was taken about two hours before the collapse uh, by someone taking tourist pictures from an airplane. Um, oh lord! <laughs> mm. So in the early afternoon, they put all this stuff out on the bridge for a, a, a concrete pour scheduled for seven p.m. that evening, uh, <laughs> just, August first, just to catch the rush hour. Well, they wanted to avoid the midday heat because that might affect how the concrete cures. Mm, as opposed to a bunch of Minnesotans driving home from work, which absolutely will not. Yeah, exactly. Well, around 6.05pm, the bridge and 190 people on it just fell right in the river. 
Oh, jeez. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Start the new rescue helicopter. Yep, there. Yep. Okay. Hey, <laughs> <build> <laughs> <a helicopter. laughs> Good Lord. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I felt bad about that as I was doing it, but I was like, yeah, no. So, not great. The Lego cop beats him with a tiny Lego <laughs> baton. <laughs> this isn't that cute. <laughs> so, all right. So as a result of, you know, the bridge collapses, there's 13 people die, 34 serious injuries, 111 minor injuries. I think a school bus fell in there as well. Jesus. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, just make me feel worse about it, why don't you? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, rest, the rest of the video is me doing penance for thinking that <laughs> drop would be a funny thing to do. So, okay. What happened? Uh, put too much shit yeah. on the bridge. Yeah. bridge don't fall, don't yeah. put too much shit bridge, on the bridge. Fall, bridge fall down, go boom. Hey, yeah, what should, happened? Should, should have done <laughs> fixed connections and made it stronger. Should always oh, listen to God. Alice. No, well, <laughs> that's right. Alice, they technically were using fixed connections because it was a riveted. They were riveted gusset plates. <laughs> should should have made them stronger. <laughs> Titanium <laughs> rivets. So investigators trace the failure to one particular gusset plate. Um, a uh, one member, which was gusset plate U ten. That's right here, right, right at, right at node ten. Um, and U you means say, upper. When you say investigators, I it like for everything else, I picture like crash investigators. For this, it just like makes me think of like some fucking uh law and order shit. Just two guys yeah. in like coats and like detective badges going around interviewing structural <laughs> members. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they got like they, they got like a cracked gusset plate in in the interrogation room. They're trying to do a good <laughs> cop, bad cop. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so U ten was on the upper cord of the bridge, right around here, um, and they found out it was under designed. How how did uh, that happen? though? yeah, that's all right. So. Here's the here's the center section of the bridge after it fell in a river. Now looking Jesus. too hot. Yeah. yeah, you weren't joking about it just falling in the river, huh? Just down a, yep. And you can sort of see here how this is the north section of the bridge on the land. You can see how that whole section of the bridge sort of rotated down and just crashed, right? Ooh, yeah. And I think this is th this this is how it failed, you know, once um since it was fracture critical right because you can sort of see that if this joint goes here right then this whole section of the bridge is a goner obviously but then there's nothing to counterbalance this part of the bridge here because of course this is a pin connection pin connection so that just sort of rotates down and pfft. All right, so this is just an in post production. I I didn't explain this adequately. I think in the um in in the actual recording. So what I'm talking about here is that if you look at this bridge, right, you have three distinct sections, right, between Pier Five and Pier Six, between Pier Six and Pier Seven, between Pier Seven and Pier Eight, right. These are all interdependent. On each other, and I think in a newer bridge you would not do that. I, I uh, let me explain. Okay, so at Pier Six and Pier Seven, that's where you want to pay attention here. Um, in a new bridge, in a new truss bridge, which generally you don't do, that's uh, for reasons of cost. Rather than having one member that bears down on the pier you would have two, right? So you would have two on top of Pier 6, you would have two on top of Pier 7, thus making each individual span its own thing, right? So when this bridge was built, um, there were... Uh, this, this was not considered best practice, um... Because it's much cheaper to not do that, and I'll explain why. So when you're building the bridge, right, what you would do in this case 
just realized my air conditioner is running. I'm sorry if you can, you can hear that in the background. What you would do is if you were starting from Pier 6, which is where you would start, you would build uh, the members at 8 here. Then you would go out both sides, right? So you'd get 7 and 9, right? Just like Star Trek. You would keep going out. You would get 6. You would get 10. You would do 5. You would do 11. You do four, you do twelve. Now I'm 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 circling right on the upper, but that would be the whole section of bridge, right on both sides, right. And because you were doing those simultaneously, they would counterbalance each other, right. And you would have some temporary supports underneath as you keep going out until you get into the extremities, which is why that picture I showed earlier of them completing the bridge, they didn't need, you know, any kind of uh, temporary supports over the river. And I, I suppose on this sort of bridge, since, you know, your entire outside cantilever is over land, they may not have needed any cantilever, any, any temporary supports inside the river, which, you know, would have made it a little easier to construct. So that's why I was saying that, you know, if they made this a sort of fracture critical bridge, it was a lot easier to put together than if they decided to make each and every individual span, um, you know, not interdependent on any other span. Right? Right. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're confused by this. Okay. Back to the podcast. How do I turn this off? Crashes down, should, right? Should, should, it, should have used effects one. Should oh, have used effects one. I, I think it wouldn't have helped. I don't know if it's uh, <laughs> how, how, supposed to. How would we to... know? You know? Has the fixed bridge killed anybody, Ross? Has it? Has it? Has it? Has it? Uh, are we looking at a fixed bridge? No, we're not. Yeah, what do you know? Yeah, yeah. You can take that degree and shove it up your ass. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, uh, what happened here, right? So, Sverdrup and Parcel started designing this bridge in 1962. Keep in mind that's only one year after the, after the guidelines for gusset plates came out for Ashto. Now, this bridge was originally designed to make use of HSLA steel, right? High strength, low alloy. Our, our nemesis. Yeah. Yep. Now, Minnesota Department of Transportation made them uh, ditch the high-strength steel fairly early on in the process. The whole thing was made of mild steel, just to make it easier to fabricate, right? Um, and to the best of the knowledge of folks at the NTSB, the uh, bridge was designed adequately. Mostly. Hmm. Love a mostly adequate. That's like it, it gets like a, a barely passing grade. Yeah. So when you design something like a bridge, you know, a major structure, so on and so forth, right? You do calculations, right? If you're the engineer. And you check the calculations and you double check the calculations. And most of the time, if you're trying to get permits and if you're trying to fulfill a contract, you not only are sub submitting drawings to, you know, your permitting office or your contractors, you're also submitting the calculations, right? And those calculations come with a professional engineer stamp, and that means if they're wrong, you're criminally liable for them, right? <clears throat> the higher regency collapse yeah, episode we yep. did being, yeah. being another good example. Yeah, exactly. This is like the world's worst math test. It's like, if you, well, if you, if, you, if you score less than 100, you go to jail. Um, <laughs> so yeah, PE stamps rule, by the way, because I like I, I was looking up a while back specimen ones just to see what they looked like, and each state uses a different name. Like Illinois just has like zero 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 one Abraham Lincoln, 
Um, wow. My, fav- my favorite is is Utah's, which was uh, like uh, I forget what number it was, but the name was John Engineer, and I was just like, yeah, that's what um, that, that's the guy from Halo, uh, John One One Seven Engineer. That was that was the guy who invented engineering, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was John Engineer. We all we all look up to him. <laughs> so yeah, you get the math wrong, you might go to jail. Uh, you all might also kill a whole bunch of people. Um, hmm. So the NTSB went through the archives and looked up the, uh, tried to find the calculations for these gusset plates, right? And they found them, but only for the lower cord of the truss, right? That's the stuff on the bottom. These upper gusset plates, no one could find the calculations for them. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? They just so they, did they just not do them? <laughs> that is, that, that, that is one of the main theories. About why they these were, were like, under-designed. Oh boy. You, you just do <laughs> half of the thing, and you're just like, well, it's symmetrical, right? Yeah. That's probably fine. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's like one of the diagrams that we use for this. It's just, like, heavily photocopied. <laughs> so, you know, they did a computer analysis of the bridge after the fact, and that showed that, you know, through, through this bridge's modifications, of course, it, um... You know, the gusset plates were beginning to become overstressed, but not to yeah, the point much, where they would fail on the much lower like cord. me. It like <laughs> it gains a bunch of weight, and that puts all of the like retaining features under more stress. <laughs> <laughs> but the upper gusset plates, right? Lower gusset plates were mostly fine. Upper gusset plates were riding the ragged edge of failure at least since the 1997 renovation. Mm-hmm. Well, good. <laughs> and that's before they de- decided to put in another like few million pounds of weight, right? Oh, that, was, that was when they added the extra million pounds of weight. Oh, uh, I see. That, that was when the pretty good then. <laughs> <laughs> that was when the final uh, extra million pounds of weight was added. Um, so. A physical inspection in 2003 showed that some of the most overstressed plates, those are at the U10 and U10 Prime locations, both on the east and west truss, you can see they're just bowing out just a little bit, just a little bit. You know, mm. you, you, it's subtle, but it's noticeable, right? Mm. And, and this is a problem. <laughs> this is something <laughs> you need to address when you see it. Uh, just, just hammer that dent back in. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. No, deferred uh, yeah, maintenance, I, deferred I, maintenance I, is good, actually. I'll go get the <laughs> Billy Mays pops a dent, <laughs> and I'll fix this <laughs> right up. <laughs> so when they did, when they uh, when they decided to repave the deck, right? All that construction material staged on top. Uh, these gusset plates finally failed, right? And since it's failure critical construction, the whole bridge went in the drink. Just uh does it just pop right open? Does the like metal snap or what? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean I imagine that this time there were probably some cracks starting to develop in them. Well there are some pictures in the report. I did not or some theor- theoretical or well they're diagrams of how the gusset plates were found, but since there was not really a uh underside of the bridge inspection since the two thousand three one, we don't know exactly mm. what they look like right yeah um i just iced tea in a like an overcoat digging uh, a gusset <laughs> plate out of the bottom of the river yeah real so sick they, son of a bitch <laughs> so yeah they put a uh, 262 hit, times heroin through their ears now <laughs> <laughs> yeah th- th- this is now a law and order appreciation <laughs> episode i'm sorry to just totally <laughs> take it off track <laughs> but that show, that, those shows rule so 262 tons of construction material on top of a, a gusset plate that was inadequately designed for the start. Not a good, not a good, and extra weight from other bridge bullshit is mm. not a good oh, combination. A term for it. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, down she went. Um, do your calculations, uh, folks. Uh, Do your calculations. Don't put a bunch of extra shit on top yeah. of your bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Y- y- y'all were trying to give me shit earlier in this, uh, early on this PowerPoint for uh, say for doing calculations. Now you realize what happens. <laughs> well, the day I become a, a bridge designer, I will. You will be the first to know. 
No, they, they hired a podcast to do this. I lied on my interview, and now I need Roz to bail me out. <laughs> uh, make it thicker. Easy. Done. More. It doesn't matter how much the bridge weighs. You know, just just make it <laughs> make it heavier. It'll be fine. Yeah, that's right. So, all right. So the NTSB eventually concluded they had never done a calculation for the upper core of the bridge, but they put the bottom. bridge up anyway. Another problem was that there were load rating guidelines for what you could add to bridges, right? Um, but they only took in, took a account of parts of the bridge that weren't the gusset plates. Oh, good. <laughs> what? That's terrific. So they did not take into account the gusset plates as part the, of the, the load rating. The most rating. vulnerable part of the whole yes. apparatus, mm. and they're just like, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. All the other structural members in the bridge, uh, perfectly fine for the extra weight they added. Um, and when they realized their error, and in 2007, they started inspecting gusset plates when they add weight to the bridge. Oh, good. No, <laughs> I feel so reassured. You die and you learn. <laughs> and a, a lot of uh, in inspections were stepped up to determine if similar underdesigned uh, plates existed, right? Okay. And then, of course, the lawsuits. Of course. Yeah. Good. May 2nd, 2008, the state of Minnesota reached a $38 million agreement to compensate victims of the bridge collapse. Okay. That's... You get, like, a, a, a number of Xboxes. It's a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. That's not that bad. You get a couple of hundred Xboxes. <laughs> okay. Right, exactly. So, in August 2010... Uh, the last of the lawsuits against URS Corporation, who did the 2003 inspection that showed uh, the buckling and the gusset plates, that was settled for $52.4 million. Um, you know, and there was like all kinds of bullshit going on there. The state of Minnesota tried to bring a lawsuit against the original engineering company, but it had been, you know, absorbed by another engineering company. Yeah, that's um, that's the kind of fuck up that you've got to do as a structural engineer is fuck it up badly, but not badly enough that it fails immediately, but enough that you can yeah, have yeah. your whole career like <laughs> persist, and then like your firm like no longer exists because it gets absorbed into another thing and another thing, <laughs> and then like in fifty years time it kills a bunch of people oh, on a yeah. school bus. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, make sure you're dead before it collapses. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the, the, the engineering firm that it was eventually absorbed into, which is Jacobs Engineering Group, you know, they were like, well, you know, too much time has passed. Uh, you can't sue us. Um, and Guess then what? <laughs> in, in 2012, the Supreme Court turned down its appeal and huh, making an actually good decision. They settled out of court for $8.9 million without admitting any wrongdoing. <laughs> Awesome. Love yeah, know, this is right? this is what we want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you can hardly revoke the guy's PE license, which is what you should do because the guy was probably dead. <laughs> exhume the guy and like take it off him. Yeah. I'm yeah, assuming yeah, the yeah, is a very good way to Yeah, dig his ass back up. Take that shit off him. Um, yeah. No. I. I mean, also like the. Um, to what extent? My question is: To what extent th is this reflective of? Just like letting a bunch of critical infrastructure inspection and maintenance and stuff slide because no one had the money to do it. I mean, the bizarre thing is they were doing the inspections and they saw there were clearly problems that needed to be addressed and they just didn't fix them. <laughs> ah, okay. That, hmm. Awesome. Which has been my experience from working in, uh, well, the private sector. Um, you know, real work, not government work. Uh. <laughs> Which is that people will pay to get the inspections done that they need to get done, and they'll get the report back that says all of these critical issues need to be addressed immediately, and then they'll just, you know, file it away. Well, the thumbs up uh, their asses, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, you know, so, sometimes people should be compelled to act on yeah. reports. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, this I I love to like have this thing where you're like legally required to do the inspections, so you do the inspections, and then just not anything else. It's fine. Yeah, just yeah like it's you're, not, you're aware. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no consequences anymore. 
Who cares? No, that's not true. That's not true. You may you may be liable to eventually pay like nine million dollars and not admit that you did anything wrong. Yes. I fucking hate those settlements. In forty years. No, you should we should bring the stocks back. (laughs) (laughs) You just gotta you just gotta sit there and eat some shit for a couple weeks. It'll be fine. You'll be all right. You'll still be alive at the end of it. So Another thing that happened, like, very quickly, people were talking about, all right, we got to replace the bridge. So this is the St. Anthony Falls Bridge. That, I don't like it. It yeah. looks like a condo. It, it kind of does, does, yeah. What so this South was South Florida de- were a bridge? Yeah. This is designed and built in under a year. Um, now, when they were scoping out this bridge... There were a couple public meetings on it, and citizens of Minneapolis made it explicitly clear that they wanted an extension of the city's light rail system on the bridge, right? Whoa! Mm -hmm. Uh, The mayor also wanted that. I assume they got it, right? Of course. Like, once you have the citizens and the politicians, like, united behind something like that. They definitely got it. Is that right? That's what happened, right? No, the Minnesota DOT was like, no, we need 10 lanes of highway traffic. No, you don't! <laughs> <laughs> just so, god damn it, dude. I, like, I know how this ends, but just god damn it. No, they, compromised and, they compromised and went with 10 lanes of highway traffic. <laughs> and, and, and called the bridge light rail ready. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. good. No, that, I assume, is meaningful, right? Yeah, that that definitely means something. Just at, at any time, you can take out a couple of lanes of of highway traffic and add in some light rail. A thing that will definitely happen I, because I, everyone I, will approve taking out highway lanes. I kind of like the idea though of like one of those uh, like those machines that kind of zipper that that can change the directions of the lanes, like we have on the uh, the Walt Whitman Bridge in Philly. I kind of like that, but hmm. for rail. Just like one machine comes knocking or like just knocking all the cars. Yeah, it just the lays river. a track ahead of it. Yeah. yeah, this is trade now. Like <laughs> this happens hours, twice a day in each hours. direction. Yeah. You gotta you gotta learn to leave a little earlier on this commute. We don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> just some just some red light stuff flashing. It's like lane is now lane is now railway. This is now the train lane. <laughs> the train is coming for you. Beat beat. <laughs> <laughs> so. And, you know, as a result of this, all right, they got this fancy new bridge, which has an absurd number of lanes. I think it's 10 lanes on the bridge, but six Ugh. lanes on the highways that approach it. Um, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and it looks like the villages at South Florida. <laughs> yeah. You know, the interstate still dumps thousands of cars and trucks on Minneapolis' streets. It contributes to pollution, general lower quality of life, occupies thousands of acres of valuable downtown real estate. But, you know, that's a small price to pay to, for easy access to the U.S. Bank Stadium. You know, <laughs> for ho- however many games the Vikings play every year there. Like eight. Go eight. Birds! Go birds! Yeah, all right, so let's talk about the 2018 <laughs> NFC Championship game. All right. So, yeah, let's do that. So the Vikings come in fresh off the Minneapolis Miracle, where they blow a massive lead to the New Orleans Saints, right? And on the very last play of the game, there's this heroic catch by uh, Stefan Diggs. He manages to keep his footing, basically hurdles the safety, uh, scores a touchdown. It gets real good, feel good shit. This is the last joy the Minnesota Vikings are going to experience this year. All right. So uh, they come to Philly, and uh, this is the season the Eagles basically couldn't lose. Uh, Minnesota goes up 7-0 on their first possession uh, with a pass to Kyle Rudolph. Uh, the Eagles have to punt, and everyone's feeling dejected and sad. Uh, and then the Eagles uh, just go, like, just out of their minds. They go up, like, 24-7 to at halftime. There's a flea flicker uh, less than five minutes into the second half. Uh, the link runs out of fireworks. Uh, because the Eagles were scoring so much. The Eagles end the game 38-7. They win it. They beat my beloved New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. Shut the fuck up. Uh, (laughs) The the Vikings had two drives in the fourth quarter, which is actually my favorite part of that. And the best part was that before before the uh, the game itself, there were a bunch of Minnesota fans who, who came to Philly and were like posing on the art museum steps or the Rocky steps if you're a moron. Uh, and being like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna win, we're gonna beat the Eagles, and then they all had to go home 
mortified and dejected. And then the Super Bowl was played at U.S. Bank Stadium, which normally kills birds, <laughs> but not today. Uh, I will. I will when we when we post this. Uh, this is the only we can do it in PowerPoint. Uh, my girlfriend was actually at that NFC Championship game, and there's terrific video from people just like leaving in shame. And honestly, <laughs> the pregame like Vikings fans walking into the link looks like a war zone. Like they're just getting pelted with beer, like getting screamed at. Uh, in that video uh, that we played the clip of, where the drunk Delco kid is out of his mind screaming "Go Birds." Uh, the, yeah, you can hear that woman like trying to argue with him, and it's just like y'all are from around here, huh? Like, <laughs> yeah, that kid is the drunkest looking human I've seen outside of Russia in my life, <laughs> dude. It was so fucking funny too because these assholes paid the next year. They end up paying like eighty four million to fucking Kurt Cousins, who sucks ass. And all he's done is beaten bad teams when he was on a bad team. So they pissed $84 million down the drain. They got rid of Stefan Diggs. They don't have a fucking future. Vikings suck. Wilds suck. Twins suck. Timberwolves suck. Go to hell. It's, 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 <laughs> go, it's, birds. it's go birds. <laughs> go birds. <laughs> St- stick to sports. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that's the story of the Interstate 35 West Bridge. And how do it was, the math. It was do destroyed the math. Yeah, by the Philadelphia the Eagles. Math. Actually do the math. Actually do the math, yes. Yeah. Do, do, yeah, don't do the lie math. about don't. that, please. Yeah. Yeah. And we got, we got a new segment. Otherwise, 40 years from after you don't do the math, the firm that bought your own firm might be sued for <laughs> slightly inconvenience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Consequences. Right. We love them, don't we, folks? Yes. So someone reminded me a couple of days ago about the existence of Mike Rowe, who I hate. Yes. Um, <laughs> and as a result, I thought we would add a new uh, segment to the podcast with some audience participation. It's That's called right. Safety Third. Right? Shake hands with me. <laughs> so, all right. So the idea here is Safety Third, you know, Mike Rowe is like all about personal responsibility and shit, you know, being a cornerstone, a, a safety and all, you know, you shouldn't just be mindlessly following procedures. You have to take personal responsibility for your safety. Right. So th- the idea here is we want to hear your stories of unsafe job sites and workplaces which you were unable to make safer through personal responsibility. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is a tip line in a formal <laughs> sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, send, send in your stories to, uh, um, well, there's your problem, our email. Our email is like what? WTYP pod? WTYP at gmail.com, yeah. Or it on Twitter. Uh, I think yeah. we have open DMs on the podcast account. Did uh, we finally just- do that? So I, I should know. probably it, finally it, hit that button. It, it, yeah. If not, then me or Liam. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, t- tell us your story. Snitch yeah. on your boss. Yeah, tell us about the, exactly. the, least, the least safe thing <laughs> that you have ever done at a job site or seen yeah. at a work site. Yeah. Leave an audio uh, file if you want, even. You know, that, that'd be cool. That would actually be really don't, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, we, don't we, do we, anything we'll that'll get you fired. You, yeah. If, if if you leave us an audio recording, we'll play it. If you yeah. uh, write us something, we will read it, and yep. uh, we're, we're we're gonna learn about. We're gonna have a safety brief. We're gonna stand up for safety. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I thought you know I would start out uh, by offering one of my own unsafe job site stories. All right. Oh boy. Oh boy. So this was. You will see on the screen in front of you a machine called a mast climber, right? mm Hmm. So you see there's two towers here. Those are called masts. Some of them work on one. This is a modular system, right? So these are two individual platforms that are linked together, right? Yes. So the first time I was on a mast climber, it was not this rinky-dink three-story situation here. Uh, This one went up about 30 stories. Um... (laughs) So I got there and I had no training on any kind of heights whatsoever, except don't walk backwards. Um, <laughs> so 
don't you know, don't drop a wrench yeah exactly it's like well you know i'd rather i'm i'm I, i'm mostly concerned with myself not falling off right because i mm. they at least gave me like the the safety uh harness stuff you know but uh you know the thing about these these full safety harnesses is you know you got the the way the harness goes around right around the top of your legs you know if you if you fall off you have a strong chance of getting forced feminized uh, <laughs> It's a small price to pay, and also in other news, I'm applying for construction jobs, uh, working at height. So, I was on a building. It was in Center City, Philadelphia, that I was working on. Right. So this is an older, older skyscraper. Right. It's the first two floors. You know, the building occupies the whole lot, but on the third floor, the light well started. Right. So it was more of a U shape. The mass climber was on the back of the building. Right. Um, and we had to go up the whole building. Now, usually on a mast climber, um, if it's right up against the facade of the building, there'll be railings along three sides, and the fourth side, obviously, that's the facade, so you can't, like, fall there. Oh, boy, right? I see where this is going already. <laughs> well, for ours, the, the, there was no fence around this void. <laughs> 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 now, what there was is there was some netting that was blocking off the light well here. Um, I'm not exactly sure why it was there. I couldn't figure out what it was doing. This building had been abandoned for some decades uh, when we got there. They just uh, Wait, were so starting... It was, it was blocking off the light well, like, level with the facade, or, like, uh, horizontally? Uh, yeah, level with the facade, yeah. I see, okay. There's a big net that went up 30 stories. Um, and, but the thing is, you know, we had to do an inspection of the light well itself. Um, so that meant basically you had to lean over and cut a hole in the net to see through. Nope. So you could figure out what was going on in the light nope. well, right? Nope. Nope. Now, nope. Nope. So now there were, there were three of us, four of us on there. There were two guys from the construction company. There was myself and my boss. Um, and the two guys from the construction company were the people who were leaning over the side of the platform, thank God. Unbeknownst um, <laughs> to the worker. Yeah. So, but the thing is, we went up 30 stories in this thing, and the way these are supposed to work, right, you know, when you link two platforms together, the motors are supposed to work in tandem, right? And also, these motors have one speed. They go up at one speed, they go down at one speed. Our problem was the two platforms, the two motors, they both had one speed, but they were two different speeds. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, so, you have a slip diff. On, uh, uh, oh yeah, we'd go up about ten stories, and one side would be about one and a half stories lagging behind. They had to wait a bit for it to catch up, and then we'd go back up again. You know, until it was go, it was so far behind that you know, I, I, I can't imagine how much torque this was putting on the uh, on the masts, which of course you know these are just flimsy little steel structures that are braced into the side of the building every three floors or so. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> so it it was um it was an interesting experience I, I i couldn't imagine a situation where my personal responsibility could have made the situation more safe when you know there's this this completely busted piece of equipment that i now have to go 300 feet up in the air in and uh and, and my boss thinks it's fine I should have pulled uh, yourself she, up she, by she, your bootstraps uh, on, yeah she did, she she, she, she. Well, she she didn't care about heights like ever. Uh, it was astonishing. I was like, I, I I can't believe you do the things you do. And then I was like, I can't believe the things I'm expected to do. <laughs> that was one of the reasons I quit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go make podcasts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna go make go make YouTubes. <laughs> Fuck, fuck this shit. Very Sorry. rarely Sorry. in the making of a City Skylines YouTube video do you have to be exactly 13 yes. stories in the air. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I never did go on a swing stage. That would have been the weird one. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was my, that was my story of going on the busted mast climber, which was, uh, you know, threatening at any time to just, you know, I don't know, rip one of the towers it was attached to down. 
just through sheer, mm. sheer torque. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, or, or you just, you know, fall into the into the light well. Uh, it's just these two guys, since the they had to operate the motors individually, they had to communicate by just yelling at each other down like this, <laughs> this 80, 90 foot long platform, because this platform was a lot longer than the one you're seeing in the picture here. Um, <laughs> I also couldn't figure out why we had hard hats. Um, yeah, because birds. No, nothing was. Bird yeah, exactly. Like, nothing's going to hit me from above. <laughs> There's also, yeah. like, a bunch of crap on the platform, like a bunch of, like, just steel beams just sitting there. That might be why one of the motor was, motors was struggling. <laughs> and just, just, just throw them off. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just shove this, uh, this eight foot long wide flange beam, like, right off the side onto Market Street. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's anyway, safety third that's uh, safety third yeah that's my safety story so um, we want your stories of how personal responsibility is something which makes a difference in the workplace hey, safety tell us your war stories <laughs> yes, yes exactly all right, send us. We, we want to hear the really grisly stuff. Tell us about like fucking like a tendrils of molten steel <laughs> getting whipped at people. Tell us about uh, like bladders balanced on three other ladders. Don't uh, don't send any gore pics. I won't look at them. I'm not going <laughs> to look at. I'm not going to put them on the screen. I don't want to see any nasty gore or shit like that. The, the, the important thing is you have to have lived to tell us the story, so it can't be too bad. Oh, it can be bad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that that was safety third. Um, on, on to Shake hands ne with danger. Next episode is about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. That's right. Yes. And I'm not back in this, back, this slide. We're uh, we're back to normal. Thank mm. God. Yes. The Alice only <laughs> did it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The rest yeah. of the time, Mothman. Some of the time, there'll be a Mothman in the slide. You won't even know. Uh, I swear to God, the beer episode will be out soon. I, I just had a couple. So long. Of cup, we were so drunk. <laughs> it was. It's been an issue. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm sorry. That's uh, very late. Um, it'll be out this month. I hope. Although yeah. this might go out on August 1st to yeah. coincide with the I-35 West uh, mm. doohickey, so... Also, yes, we know about the numbering. Yes, it is on purpose. It is on purpose. Suffer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Suffer. yeah, it is on purpose. It's to, it's to make you mad. Yes, all right. Anyone got any commercials before we go? Uh, nope. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 I, I, that's, that's easy enough. All right. All right, cool. <laughs> Off you to Zen.